You might have missed it with the carnage today in the markets. I know the last couple of days have been terrible. But we got some big news in the financial technology space. Longtime MasterCard CEA Ajabanga, the man who took the company from a $26.5 billion credit card business and turned into a $301 billion financial behemoth, has announced he'll transition to the role of executive chairman by year's end. He's going to be replaced by a man by the name of Michael Meebach, who's a longtime MasterCard hand, who's currently the chief product officer. We've been a huge fan of Ajabanga. MasterCard's a major position for my travel trust because under his tutelage, the company's achieved a 13% compound annual revenue growth rate. That's remarkable. This is a gigantic business. Get this. Stock's given you a nearly 1,500% return since you took over. S&P, 285% since then. Now, he's turning over the CEO reins to a man who knows the business inside and out. Of course, it was a tough day for any corporate news, and it didn't help that MasterCard last night had to lower its guidance because of the coronavirus. Well, we have to get a line on that, but uh, look, you know I think many other companies have to do the same. So let's check in with Ajay Banga and Michael Mina to learn more about the leadership transition and the future for an unbelievable stock, even in a global pandemic. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, first, uh, I've got to tell you, Mr. Banga, I didn't expect it, but I know that you felt that there's a certain period of time that you yeah. should run the place and then you should... Uh, without leaving, because I know you're not going to just disappear, yeah. uh, help out your successor. So tell us why now. Well, I think I've had a great run. And, you know, it's been 10 years. And when I joined, I told everybody that I'd give it a 10-year crack. This is the 11th year. And so right. it's time. One of the things the CEO does well is build a good bench. We've got a great bench. I've got a person ready to move in who is great with his knowledge of payments in the industry, but also understands geographies and understands the kind of culture we want to build and sustain. And so it's a good time to step aside. Knowing when to step aside is as important as knowing when to drive. Well, that's what we want to hear and don't hear very often, frankly. Uh, Michael, you have knowledge of the areas that people really want to own. You have knowledge of payment technologies, digital innovation. Is there still a re- regulation it, the company, have I always felt, is way ahead of everybody else in these, in, in, in these areas. How much has already been you, and where can you take it? So I think where we need to uh, go, where we can take it, huge potential beyond what we've already done. So there's a lot to be done in payments um, outside of card payments. We're hugely successful in card payments. But then think about all the other types of payments that are out there, from one bank account to another, push payments, mobile wallets, all these types of solutions. I think there's tremendous space out there. Think about the whole space of B2B payments, how you make business-to-business payments simpler, massive opportunity for us. Think further ahead, voice commerce. You know, what do we all think about, the Alexas of this world and so forth? Um, How do we remain present in that space? More opportunity. So I'm pretty excited about what's ahead of us. Uh, At the same time, I I think that geographically, we've been waiting for you to be able to move into China. Uh, I think China needs your help more than ever. It would seem like a natural for them to say, you know what? We need. We need what MasterCard brings. Any hope for that? Yes. Yeah, so we just got told that uh, our license application has been accepted. But, Jim, from here to actually getting transactions through our rails is probably a year and a half off, okay. in my thinking. We've got a great JV partner, NUCC. That's the company that actually does the clearing and authorizing and settlement of all the, all the Alipays and WeChat's transactions. So we're going to be the majority holder of that JV. And we're going to work with them locally on the ground. So I'm excited, but it's a year and a half. Away. Okay, I'm glad you put that in perspective because a lot of people want to jump the gun in terms of valuation. Michael, one of the things that uh, people say to me is, Jim, you love this MasterCard so much. But there are things like PayPal that are they are digital. And you guys, they're plastic. Why do you still like plastic? That really isn't the right way to look at MasterCard, is it? I think, Jim, you're absolutely right. It's not the right way to look at MasterCard. If I just talk about our relationship with people like PayPal, they're amongst our largest customers. They're largest, you know, they're lar- it's a front end. It is a way that people can pay, but in the end, it comes back to our rails and our reach, our safety, security. So the combination of business models like those with ours is a great way to think about it. Think about Apple, on the other hand. On, you know, Apple and us partnering together with Goldman Sachs on the Apple card. Here's another digital company that, in the end, looked at our technology, like tokenization and things like that, and said, that is a great user experience that comes together. So I believe there is huge opportunity to partner and drive the overall payment ecosystem ahead. I'm glad you brought up the Goldman card, because I wanted to do that. The Goldman guys tell me, look out. This thing is really incredible. The Apple guys are telling me that it's amazing. But it doesn't get talked about enough for either company, particularly in an environment now where everything's for sale. But this is going to be longer after the coronavirus is over. 
So, you know, I'm really not sure why it's not talked about enough. I think it's fantastic. I don't know if you ever applied yourself, but I within, you know, like 10 seconds, you yeah. get it right on your phone. I use it it's every a fantastic day. user experience. The card looks fantastic. So, you know, the other day I was in a shop and the shop assistant showed me the card with pride and said, I have it. Yeah. You know, that doesn't happen with every other card. We're really happy about this partnership. True digital first card, but even people are excited about the piece of plastic in their hand. And this I would, metal. Okay, I'd be most remiss if we didn't talk about something that has nothing to do with earnings. It's called DQ. It's decency, decency quotient. You actually introduced it to me many years ago. This is, I think, is I will say, is your true legacy besides what you made for shareholders. DQ. So I think that started out with me trying to explain to our employees the importance of leading with your heart and your mind, both with your colleagues and your peer group, but also outside in the community you live and work in. And my belief is that companies can do well and do good at the same time. And that's where the idea came from. So IQ, EQ is the things I grew up with. DQ is my way of saying decency quotient, which is do you bring your heart and mind to work? Do people look for you as having their hand in the back or is it in your face? Are you the type who creates a level playing field and let the best person win? Are you fair as compared to just being nice? And I think all those things add up to this idea of DQ. So Jim, we pursued the idea of 500 million people coming into financial inclusion. That's happened. Actually, the work started with Michael in South Africa years ago. We've gone after 100 million meals for the World Food Program. We just announced the Priceless Planet Coalition, where we're going to plant 100 million trees with our partners. That's all part of the idea of DQ outside the company. And inside the company, and you'll love this, if you contribute 6% to your 401k anywhere in the world in this company, we will put in 10%. So the idea is that at 16% a month, you can retire at the right age with something close to 75% of your last drawn salary if you earn a decent return on it. So those are examples and of I, how and you I'm do just this. get personal for a second. You once told me when my daughters were younger, yeah. there is hope. Women are improving in the workplace. You said you go to Smith, you get the best, uh, uh, best mathematicians. That, that was something <laughs> that you told me that made me feel like, you know what, top guys are getting it. Yeah, well, yeah, that was a funny story. We were trying to hire female engineers into our downtown tech hub in Manhattan. We sent a bunch of people out to Columbia School of Engineering, including a lot of women, and they came back with a bunch of men. And I said, that's good. I'm sure they're very good. But you're going to go to Smith College of Engineering because there are no men there. Let's see you get some back. And they came back with the most outstanding women engineers who are now at the core of our workforce at the Tech Hub. Well, I sure hope that you stay in the mix because you're an inspiration to many, many people. Thank you and very much. And you will do a great job. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, you for Jim. creating so much Thank wealth you. for people. Okay, that's Idra Banga. He is the current CEO of MasterCard. And that's Michael Mebach. He's the MasterCard chief product officer who's set to take over the CEO role in January. You get the kind of things that I asked you to talk about when you make that much money for people. But you are a decent, good man. And that's probably the most important thing. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much gentlemen. Thank Stay with Mad Money. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.